Hi, I'm Mark Keane. I'm a Microsoft Azure evangelist. I saw a much needed gap in the Azure market and developed a tool completely based on PowerShell to help Azure customers move virtual machines effortlessly from Azure's old ASM Azure Service Management environment to Azure's new ARM Azure Resource Manager environment. Before today, there hasn't really been a tool to fully automate this process, and it's been a totally manual task. It's on Microsoft's roadmap to move away from ASM, and the sooner you move away from it and onto ARM, the better you will be. The tool can automatically migrate Azure Virtual Machines from one subscription on ASM to another subscription on ARM. The tool takes into consideration every possible combination for the source ASM-based virtual machine. For example, if the VM sits behind a cloud service with other VMs also behind the same cloud service. Whether there's an ASM-based load balancer used, it brings across the same load balancer endpoint rules. Any endpoint NAT rules, the same inbound NAT rules are set up on ARM. Multiple disks, other than the OS disk, if there are several data disks attached to the VM, even if they are striped in Windows, LUN IDs are kept the same. Multiple NICs, there's a primary NIC and there's secondary NICs. More than one NIC is catered for. The existing virtual network along with any subnets. Both premium storage and standard storage is catered for, instance level public IP addresses and reserved IP addresses, and the same DNS configuration on the virtual network, including the primary and secondary DNS addresses. It's a good idea to keep all virtual machines attached to the same virtual network grouped together by migrating these to the same Azure resource group. Furthermore, if you follow a rough ASM to ARM relationship of one virtual network to one Azure resource group, the tool will ensure that there will be the same virtual network configured in the same Azure resource group. If you had multiple virtual machines and cloud services attached to the same ASM virtual network, a replica ARM based virtual network will be created as you move the first virtual machine member of a virtual network, then subsequent virtual machines will naturally be attached to the same virtual network as they are moved across. There is no perfect match of an ASM virtual machine configuration versus an ARM based virtual machine configuration. When virtual machines are migrated from ASM to ARM using the tool, the ARM-based load balancer is used by default at all times except for the basic family of virtual machines which don't support the load balancer. The load balancer is used for non-basic virtual machines even if there is a single virtual machine or many virtual machines, as the ARM-based load balancer is the closest match to an ASM-based cloud service. In the case of the basic family of virtual machines, an NSG, a network security group is created, along with the same endpoint NAT rules and a dynamically assigned PIP, public IP address. If there are more than one virtual machine behind a cloud service, which is set to the basic family, then all virtual machines behind this cloud service are migrated together, but without a load balancer by using an NSG network security group instead to keep the existing endpoint NAT rules in place. The DNS name of the virtual machine will change as ARM uses different DNS names than that of ASM. If you have services running accessible from outside, ensure that you have a low TTL in preparation to update your external DNS record. In the case of moving a domain controller, you are given the option of keeping the same local IP address on the virtual machine set as a statically assigned DHCP address. Please note, if your source VM has multiple NICs, this option affects all NICs. The default option is not to keep the same local IP address as everything in Azure is DHCP based and no static IP addresses as best practice. The tool will copy virtual machine disks from an ASM based storage account to an ARM based storage account. The virtual machine being migrated needs to be shut down to ensure a successful copy. Prior to shutting down the virtual machine, you are given the option to specify whether you would like to start back up the source virtual machine upon completion of copying the disk. If you choose no, when the virtual machine is shut down, it is deprovisioned and loses its VIP. Please note that this tool automatically includes all virtual machines behind the same cloud service to be migrated together. So this affects the entire cloud service of virtual machines.
It takes roughly 10 minutes to copy each disk, OS or data disk in the same Azure data center. Storage accounts are created automatically on the target Azure resource group as per best practice, using a separate storage account for OS disks and a separate storage account for data disks. If the source virtual machine uses totally premium storage for both OS and data disks, then a separate standard ARM based storage account is created automatically for the purposes of boot diagnostics usage. Upon completion of running the tool, the tool displays an overview of information for the newly migrated virtual machine, including new DNS names, IP addresses, and connection information for remote desktop. It's Mark Keen here. I'm going to demonstrate for you right now the brand new tool which I've made. It's the Azure Virtual Machine Migration Tool, which migrates uh, virtual machines from the ASM part of Azure, which is the cloud services environment, across to the Azure Resource Manager environment. So what we've done, I've set up some virtual machines here to use as a demo. I've got this one here and I've got this one here so one and two they're both part of the same cloud service and I've pretty much configured it so they've got quite a few little combinations in here and if we go through and have a look um, at the configuration of it uh, they're part of an availability set okay it's a standard tier of virtual machine Endpoints, I've got quite a few endpoints in here. I've got the remote desktop one, which is a default. Um, I have some load balancing, load balanced um, endpoints as well, which we are uh, going to test with to bring that across. And not only that, if we scroll down on the dashboard here, we've got several disks attached to each one. So we've got the OS disk, obviously. Uh, we've got two data disks attached to it as well. We've also got an extra nick which you can't see here so let's jump into one of them and have a bit of a browse around and have a look and see so if we open up Windows Explorer we can see that my computer here or this PC I've got, I've got an S drive here I've labeled stripe because it's a stripe and if we have a look at the size of it it's two terabytes so I've got two one terabyte Azure disks attached to this VM likewise to the other one as well I can go into it and I can read the data I can create folders which I've done here if I open up disk management I will see a similar configuration of the S drive you can see it's a stripe so two one terabyte disks uh, RAID 0 which gives me two terabytes and if I open up the network settings I can see I've got my two NICs attached to this VM because it's an A3 series. I'm allowed to attach more than one NIC. One of them is going to be the default. This one is a default NIC because it's got the default gateway attached to it. And the other one obviously will be the additional NIC, which I've attached to the VM because it doesn't have a default gateway set, but it does have an internal IP address on the same virtual network. So there you have it. So as you can see at the top, it's got the old DNS name. It's cloudout.net, which is part of the Azure Service Management environment. We're going to minimize that and we'll kick off the tool. We put in a password to begin with at the very beginning. Uh, it's then asking for source credentials of the source Azure environment, which I'm going to put in here. And this is a source subscription of where my virtual machines are located in which I want to migrate across to ARM. I'm going to be using the same subscription for both. However, you can use different subscriptions uh, which don't have any relationship with one another and it does work. So down here on the screen, I'll just drag it up. It's asking me to select a subscription after I've logged in to the old environment. So I'm going to select the subscription that I want to select. And it's asking me now for credentials again, this time for the target Azure subscription. So I'll just log in uh, for that. And again, it's going to take those credentials, apply them to the target 
Azure Resource Management, Azure Resource Manager area of Azure. It'll prompt me for a list of subscriptions to use. Uh, again, so I'll select the same subscription and let that run through. Now, once it does that, it's going to go and get a whole bunch of uh, virtual machines, the entire listing of virtual machines available uh, to me in ASM, obviously, and it will allow me to select one of the virtual machines. Now, while we're waiting for this, if I go back, there's two virtual machines here. They're both behind the same cloud service, same DNS name. If I select one of these virtual machines or any other virtual machine, it'll automatically, the tool will automatically see that that virtual machine is part of a cloud service. And any other virtual machines inside of that same cloud service will be migrated at the same time. So here we go. This is a listing of the virtual machines it's picked up for me, which is pretty much exactly the same mirror image of what you see there. Now I can select one of the virtual machines that I want to migrate, that one or that one, uh, and I click OK. It'll take that information and tell me that the virtual machine will confirm it for me. It's now asking to enter a resource group or I can use an existing one. This is obviously a resource group in the new environment, the ARM environment in Azure. So I'll enter in a new one to create or you can see or you can select an existing one it's up to you and it confirms it and it's going to go away and ask me a question whether I want to power the virtual machines back up after I've migrated them so in other words what's happening here is uh, whatever I select here no or yes Obviously, during the process of migrating the virtual, virtual machines across, it has to power down the virtual machines first in order to successfully copy the OS disk and the data disks and everything else across to the target ARM-based storage account, which obviously it creates a storage accounts as well automatically for us. Uh, and so all I'm selecting here is no to say that I don't want to power those virtual machines back up again in ASM after they've been shut down in order to copy the disks. So I'm going to hit no. And the next question here is whether I want to keep the same existing IP address on the virtual machines I'm moving over. So for example, the internal IP address on the subnets, if I want to keep the same and have it uh, set up as a statically assigned Azure DHCP uh, IP address, uh, I can select no or yes. I will select no because best practice in Azure, everything should be DHCP. Unless, of course, you're moving, say, a domain controller, which requires you to keep that same IP address configured on it for purposes of DNS configuration and everything else, uh, you would select yes here. But I'm going to select the default no. It's going to go out and get a whole bunch of other information for the virtual machine, which I selected, which is this number one here. It's going to also realize at this time that, OK, this virtual machine is part of a cloud service, this one here. And there's other members or other virtual machines part of the same cloud service. So it's going to take two of these across at the same time. It's going to keep them together, grouped logically as part of the same cloud service. Which makes sense because the cloud service has a VIP in front of it and obviously the endpoints come in, in internally, come inbound from the VIP through the cloud service into the back end VMs. And so if I'm going to move one VM without the other, it's going to break those endpoints coming in. So we're keeping that configuration the same. And depending on the family or, or the size of the VM, most of the time, we will create a load balancer in the target ARM environment. The load balancer is the closest match to the cloud service. Unless, of course, we're migrating a basic family of virtual machines which doesn't support the load balancer. In that instance, we will be setting up a network security group instead with the same uh, inbound NAT rules. Okay, so it's going through and shutting down the source virtual machines. It's grabbed all the information and we'll wait for that to happen. 
It then copies the disks. The copy process starts off and it uses the Azure uh, PowerShell command in the background. I think it's uh, by memory start Azure blob copy. Uh, it goes through and copies uh, the OS disks and all the data disks for each virtual machine. Uh, obviously after it's set up the, uh, the brand new storage accounts on the target side. We can have a look at that right now. In fact, if we hit refresh on resource groups here, and go down and pull up the resource group which we created or we specified it's created it already and we can see there's two resources in here so far uh, it does all the other resources at the end um, and so so far we've got two storage accounts we've got one storage account for data one for os and at the moment it's copying the os disk i believe because it does the os uh, disks first in that order and if we go through here, click on blobs and go through here and click on the VHD container, which is obviously what it's automatically created for us. Uh, there it is. There you can see that it's copied across the uh, or it's copying across the VHD file for the uh, for the uh, first virtual machine. It's the OS disk. So, yeah. We'll come back once this is finished copying and we'll show you the finished result. And as you can see, it's created all the new resources in the resource group that we specified before. Uh, they're all listed here. We've got the availability set at the top. We've got the two virtual machines, one and two. We've got the load balancer. We've got the two NICs for each of the virtual machines. We've got the extra NIC for one of the virtual machine and the extra NIC for the other virtual machine because they had more than one NIC attached to them. Uh, we've got a PIP, which is the public IP address, which is attached to the load balancer. Uh, and it should be set with a static IP address. We've got the virtual network that's come across with all the subnets in there. And we have the two storage accounts down the bottom. And as you can see on the left hand side here, the script is finished running and it displays a configuration summary or a summary of the virtual machines that have been migrated and it gives you the handy information here with the RDP connection information. So it's got the server name uh, with the full, fully qualified DNS name to connect into it. So if I was to select that entry now and copy that and then go to remote desktop and put that in, I should be able to connect straight away. And it looks like it is yeah, it looks like it's going straight in. Yep, it's logging in. And let me just make this a little bit smaller so you can see it. Okay, so if I open up Windows Explorer, you can see I've got my Stripe drive still intact. The two disks attached to the virtual machine. I can go in, I can navigate through. If I right click and go into disk management, I can see my Stripe is still intact there as well. And if I open up network settings, I can see I've got my two network adapters here. I've got this one here, which does not have a default gateway. So that's the additional one. And this one does have a default gateway attached. So that's the primary NIC.